This is a video of 20 dermoids described using IOTA terminology. My name is Dr Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. A dermoid is also known as a mature cystic teratoma. The two terms are interchangeable. I'm going to show you 20 cases of this common adnexal abnormality. They fit the term of IOTA simple descriptor and you will find more definitions about IOTA and the definitions on the IOTA playlist. A dermoid is known as a unilocular tumour with mixed echogenicity and acoustic shadowing. And when it's in a premenopausal woman, this is one of the simple descriptors. The other simple descriptors are seen here and divide into benign and malignant categories. You can pause the video and have a look at them individually. There are also benign and malignant features for simple rules and you will see that the dermoid cyst has two typically benign features. It is a unilocular cyst, that means there is no solid material, and acoustic shadowing. In the absence of any malignant features, this looks to be benign. As the simple rules state, if one or more malignant features are present in the absence of a B feature, the mass is classified as malignant. If one or more benign features are present in the absence of a malignant feature, the mass is classified as benign. If there are both malignant and benign features, or neither, the result is inconclusive. So using simple rules, you can categorise adnexal masses into benign, uncertain and malignant categories. So a dermoid is a unilocular tumour with mixed echogenicity and acoustic shadows in a premenopausal woman. And it's quite easy to miss due to the similarity to bowel and shadowing. This is a typical dermoid. You can see here that it is unilocular. It consists of one locule. The echogenicity is mixed. Here is the typical white Rokitansky nodule, which is not solid material. And this is more low level ground glass echogenicity. Between the two, the echogenicity is mixed. And there is dense shadowing behind the Rokitansky nodule. This is a video of the same lesion. You can clearly see it's unilocular, there's one locule, there is no solid material, the echogenicity is mixed and there is dense posterior acoustic shadowing. A dermoid can mimic bowel. This was a 140 mm dermoid. It was unilocular with mixed echogenicity, minor vascularity, and you can see that there's bowel next to it. This is the dermoid, and here is some bowel, and the echogenicity is very similar. But the difference is that you can often see peristalsis in the bowel. In this case, this patient had normal ovaries, but she had some bowel in the adnexal area, but on closer inspection, there was active peristalsis and this was not a dermoid. This was a 40 millimeter dermoid. It is unilocular with mixed echogenicity, no shadowing and no vascularity. This was an 80 millimeter multilocular. There is more than one locule multilocular um, cyst with mixed echogenicity Irregular walls in this case, they do look to be irregular. No shadowing behind there and there was some moderate vascularity. So this was a slightly less typical dermoid. This dermoid is 100 millimetres. It was multilocular with irregular walls, mixed echogenicity. Note particularly these linear shadows which can indicate hair. There was shadowing and no flow. The striking thing about this case was that this lady was 69 years old. This lesion measured 80 millimetres and again it is unilocular, it is one locule. These Rokitansky nodules do not count as solid material so it's not a unilocular solid, it is unilocular. The echogenicity of the cyst contents was mixed. There was no posterior shadowing, I think that was more from the bowel adjacent and there was no vascularity. This was a 55 millimeter lesion, again unilocular, 
with mixed echogenicity. Here is a very pronounced Rokitansky nodule with posterior shadowing. Here again are these lines indicative of hair in the lesion. But there was strong vascularity in this area, a vascularity of four. This again is an unusual feature and it should raise suspicions that it could be more than just a dermoid. In fact, this was simply a dermoid. This lesion measured 80 millimetres. It was unilocular. Here is the extent of the lesion. You can see it's quite difficult to see the edges in this single view. There was mixed echogenicity, shadowing and minor vascularity. This patient had bilateral dermoids. The right ovary was a 50 millimetre lesion and it was unilocular with mixed echogenicity. And on the left, it was 46 millimetres. Uh, again, unilocular with mixed echogenicity, uh, shadowing and no flow. This patient had bilateral dermoids. The one on the right measured 80 millimetres and it's unilocular with mixed echogenicity, shadowing and minor vascularity. The image on the left shows a unilocular cyst with mixed echogenicity, shadowing and minor vascularity. And this image shows the right and the left ovary next to each other in the transverse view. It's quite difficult on just a single image to see what these cysts look like and the moving image of course is much easier to interpret. This is quite an unusual dermoid but one seen never forgotten. It was 100 millimetres, unilocular, again still it's a single locule with mixed echogenicity with little balls floating in fluid, mixed echogenicity with shadowing, posterior acoustic shadowing, and there was minor vascularity only. And this image is what the cyst looks like on 3D ultrasound. This ovary measured 70 millimetres, and again, it is unilocular. The Rokitansky nodule does not count as solid material. A mixed echogenicity, some shadowing, and no vascularity. This lesion, slightly unusual, it was 80 millimetres, seen here in two planes. This is the whole lesion. And it was multilocular, solid, multilocular solid, uh, with anechoic cyst contents, no shadowing, and there was some strong vascularity seen at the edge of the lesion. Also, not so clear from here, there were four avascular papillations um, which is it's difficult sometimes to know whether something is a Rokitansky nodule or whether it's a papillation or whether it's just an irregular wall, um, but you would always describe the worst case scenario. This was a dermoid. This case, this lesion measured 40 millimetres and again it is unilocular with quite dense but mixed echogenicity. There was some shadowing and no flow and here you can see some normal ovary at the periphery but ultrasound is a dynamic examination and when you move the probe you will see that these two would move together. You can again see that there's no vascularity. In this example this ovary, this lesion measured 40 millimeters and again it's unilocular with mixed echogenicity. This is more dense Rokitansky nodule. Here are the hair, the, the hair lines, hair floating in the liquid, mixed echogenicity shadowing, posterior acoustic shadowing, uh, and no flow in the lesion. Sometimes it's difficult to tell is the vascularity in the lesion or next to it, but in this case I felt that the vascularity was next to it and there was no flow in the lesion itself. This dermoid was 100 millimetres, unilocular, with mixed echogenicity, posterior shadowing, and minor vascularity. You can see here some minor vascularity at the periphery. This dermoid measures 85 millimetres. It is unilocular with mixed echogenicity, shadowing and minor vascularity. This dermoid was very large at 180 millimetres and it was either multilocular or multilocular solid. It's 
difficult to know whether that is solid material or not. The area here looks very much more like a typical dermoid with a little rocky tansky nodule, some mixed echogenicity, some, some hair likely. Um, but the wall was irregular and it could be solid material, so I called it multilocular solid. There were no other suspicious features and this turned out to be a dermoid. This case is very special because this patient was 75 years old. This lesion measured 40 millimetres and it was difficult to know whether it was solid with a minor liquid component, whether it was multilocular solid or whether it was in fact unilocular with mixed echogenicity. The echoes were certainly heterogeneous and there was some shadowing and minor vascularity, minor vascularity at the edge. Again, it's difficult to interpret these findings on a still image and this is a video of the same case. And this was again a dermoid, a mature cystic teratoma. You can see the pulsations of the iliac vessels. And a unilocular lesion with mixed echogenicity, some shadowing. And not seen in this view, but on Doppler, there was minor vascularity. This case is of two very large bilateral dermoids. The images on the right are of the right ovary, which measured 15 centimetres. And the one on the left is the left ovary. And the ovaries looked similar in that they were multilocular with fewer than 10 locules, with mixed echogenicity, dense shadowing and no vascularity. Again, it's difficult to interpret the stills and here is a video. Seeing the right ovary on the left of the screen, the left ovary on the right of the screen. And you can see very clearly that they are mixed echogenicity with shadowing. There are the hairline stripes on the right and the ovaries are freely mobile. But these ovaries were so large they occupied pretty much all of the abdominal cavity. After bilateral ovarian cystectomy, they were bilateral dermoids. So in conclusion, a dermoid is typically a unilocular tumour with mixed echogenicity, acoustic shadowing in a premenopausal woman, and on simple descriptors, this would come out as a dermoid. Dermoids can look unusual, and it's possible that it's a diagnosis in a postmenopausal woman, but you have to be very careful not to miss uh, other pathology. If you pause the video and copy this down, this is my performer for my reporting, and it's very useful to help you to define, using IOTA criteria, what the adnexal mass looks like. Thank you.